My friends, we're about to do part two of one of my favorite videos of all time. One of my favorite videos I've ever done. We are checking out a channel that we've only checked out one time before, but I have been waiting. I don't know why I've been waiting so long. I've wanted to do this forever. But we are back with none other than the man, the dude, the dude. Tim Tom! Hello, my name is Tim Thomas, but my friends call me Tim Sorry. My goal was to make the intro even more annoying than the last one. We had checked out Tim Tom just once before, but it honestly, I was blown away by how much fun I had. It was like one of my favorite videos. I'm gonna link it at the end if you haven't seen it, but for now, we have only scratched the surface of Tim Tom's incredible stuff. We have more essential viewing to get through. Skipping school. More dumb stuff I did as a kid. My least favorite teacher. I say we start with the really quick one, skipping school. Is this the three minute class? Classic. Is this a three minute classic? I just booty cheeks, man. Are you ready, people? I'm so excited for this video. Strap in, people. Get yourself some water. Stay hydrated. Get yourself a snack. Whatever you're gonna do. Make sure you subscribe to Tim Tom. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Maybe boop the like button now. May as well. Boop just the boop the like button now. You may as well. Get it over with, then you don't have to exit out a full screen after. Cool. Let's go, people. Skipping school. Three, two, one. Gar. Once every semester in high school, we would have a mandatory spirit assembly. I've been told that it was about supporting our sports teams or something, but based on the title, I'm not entirely convinced that it wasn't about ghosts. Anyway, my huh. friends and I would usually get our parents to write us notes so we could leave after lunch instead of having to sit in those uncomfortable bleachers for two hours. Wow. But one time, I forgot to get my note. <laughs> I was resigned to my spooky fate until fifth period when I found my golden ticket. Someone had left a printed staff-only email in plain sight. It listed who was supposed to guard which door after final attendance what? was taken to be sure that students couldn't skip the assembly. What? Armed with this email and a map of the school, I began to hatch my escape plan. What? Dude, this dude. What is with this dude and floor plans and security? That is hilarious. That rather than like forging a note from his mom, he instead is doing some like splinter cell operation. <laughs> oh, sure. If that's the approach, go for it. I hope it worked out for you. I crossed off every exit in the list and found that one was to be left unattended. For some reason, the assembly was in the gym, so the auditorium and its backstage oh. door leading outside would be unsupervised, which would have been perfect if the entrance to the auditorium wasn't locked from the inside. <laughs> Luckily, I just happened to have some electrical tape. When the lunch bell rang, I what? ran to my locker and hit my first snag. What? Kyle noticed me taking things out of my locker instead of putting them away and immediately knew. Tim Tom, how are you getting out of this? With no time to explain, I got all terminator on him and was like, Come with me if you want to live. So Kyle grabbed his bag and followed followed me to the auditorium's side door, in plain view of an exit that would soon be guarded. Oh, I knew that what? the side door could be unlocked if you pulled up on the handle real hard, but for the sake of the story, pretend that I picked the lock, because that's way cooler. Okay, what's the duct tape gonna be for? And what does the person say, if, if, the, if that door's getting uh, guarded, what's the person over here gonna say? Hey, what are you doing in the auditorium, you are Oh, I just, I wanted to practice my uh, Santa impression. Christmas is coming up. Is he gonna get seen? What on earth do you need duct tape for? What are we even doing? Shut up, Kyle. I have a plan. We made our way to the back of the auditorium and stashed our bags. Then I covertly Stash disabled the entrance's locking mechanism. Doesn't that sound cool? Oh, this is for later. This is for later. He's setting up for later. Wow. Dude, I really feel like faking an email or faking a note would have been way easier than this. I put tape on the latches. After lunch, everyone headed to take attendance before the assembly. It was then that panic set in. The entrance to the auditorium may be unlocked, but it's raised above the cafeteria floor. Walking up those steps would be suspicious. We needed a credibility prop. For those of you not versed in the art of doing things you're not supposed to, a credibility prop is something that makes it look like you belong where you don't. I got just the thing. I got just the thing. And unfortunately, I'm wearing the worst shirt for this. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the I work here vest. Yes, this is the wrong video to wear a bunch of orange. If you put on the I work here vest, you can go anywhere, anytime, anywhere. If you wanna be convincing, try to look a bit more like a normal person, like maybe don't have tattoos and, and wacky hair and stuff. But aside from that, this is how you go to the place. <laughs> if Tim Tom had an I work here vest, he's, so he's solid, except he looks like a high school kid because he's in high school, so that wouldn't work. A credibility prop is something that makes it look like you belong where you don't. When I reached my class, I saw it. A 50-foot ethernet cable coiled on a table uh... by the door. Perfect. 
I was the first out of the room, and when I saw Kyle, I threw him one end of the cable and let it all unfurl. Now, if a teacher saw us walking up the steps, it would look like we were working, <laughs> I guess. Look, it made sense at the time, okay? It didn't. Shut up, Kyle. We grabbed our bags and headed backstage. Kyle opened the door, blinding me with sunlight and freedom Run! before retreating immediately. Someone who had made a break for it was getting hauled back inside by a teacher, and she had almost seen us. Dang it, Kyle. Do not blow this operation. I opened the door more cautiously this time. The coast was clear, and we bolted in opposite directions. Rob, my getaway driver who remembered his note, was waiting in his car, engine running. It was hard to believe, oh after gosh. what must have been whole minutes of planning, we were finally free. <laughs> That's like so why that's so much more work than necessary. What <laughs> Tim Tom really confuses me because he is like the most interesting combination of like really wholesome, but then will do anything he can to break this rule. I don't understand. My fifth period teacher actually overheard me discussing my plan and was like, Tim Tom, why don't you just go to the assembly? And I remember really dramatically turning around and saying something like, it's not about the assembly. It's about the plan. And he was like, all right, and went back to playing solitaire. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, the teacher just, the, the teacher cares about that the appropriate amount. In other words, they don't. Okay, that was an insane start. Now let's do more general stories. More dumb stuff I did as a kid. So we checked out Dumb Lies I Told as a Kid. I don't know if this is the sequel to that. The first one was about lies, this is about stuff. But either way, is there anything more enjoyable than just dumb kid <laughs> stories? <laughs> it's like the best thing ever. I'm gonna take off the I Work Here vest because it looks stupid. People, let's hit it. Three, two, one, go. All right, get the markers. You're gonna need those. Tim Mobile in the box. When you close it, let someone roll you around on your head. Oh no. This is even more dangerous. Part of growing up is learning more about how the world works, and one of the ways you learn is by experimenting, trying stuff, because why not? I don't know what'll happen, and besides, it could be fun. So it's only natural to look back at stuff you did when you were younger and had less experience and think, why would I do that? Knowing what you know now, it seems dumb, but you wouldn't know what you know now if you hadn't tried what you did then, which is mostly my way of justifying the dumb stuff I did when I was a kid, so you don't judge me, because I didn't know any better, okay? I was just a sweet, innocent child trying to find his way in a cruel and confusing world. Some of the dumb stuff I did as a kid wasn't that big of a deal, and is honestly kind of adorable. Like one time, I got a cardboard box, I brought it to the top of the stairs, climbed in, and slid down. Like a roller coaster and it worked? made of cardboard. Five-year-old Tim Tom didn't know what would happen once he ran out of stairs. True. However, thanks to past Tim's sacrifice slash experiment, we now know that the box will explode, and the sole passenger will indeed smack the concrete floor of the basement, and it will hurt, and much like a baby bird slash fighter pilot, he will lay there in shock before shouting, Mayday! Okay, well, you but you have your teeth still? You kept your teeth? That's my concern. First of all, I would never try that box down the stairs thing. In my mind, that's gonna tip over long before. You have to know how to distribute your weight properly. Properly. Have any of you guys ever done that? I would absolutely never try that. But then face planting on concrete, bro? You only make that mistake once because you only have two teeth to knock out in the front. But if Tim Tom, if Tim Tom kept his teeth from that, then consider that a victory and never do that again. My friends, are you hungry? If you're like me, it may be partway through this video and you might be a little bit hungry. But unfortunately, you don't have time to cook a meal. Well, it turns out I have actually a solution for this issue. Because homies, this video is sponsored by Factor. So you guys know me. I spend all day editing videos and then I spend like 40 minutes cooking my dinner. And sometimes I don't want to do that. And with Factor, you don't have to. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, dietitian improved meals right to your doorstep. Their team of gourmet chefs create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your best all day long. I cannot tell you how, how much this has uh, helped me, <laughs> honestly. They deliver the meal ready for you to just heat up in like two minutes and then you're good to go. For me, it saves so much time because I am so tired by the time I'm done work. I just take it, throw it in the oven or the microwave, two minutes, boom, and it tastes great. Are you too busy running around during the day to think about lunch? Keep your energy up with lunch to go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad tapas that are ready to eat 
when you're on the go. No microwave required. They literally have options for everyone. If you want to make your life a little bit easier, save some time, save some cooking. Like you owe, you owe it to yourself, honestly. Like it is so nice to not worry about cooking every single day, honestly. And Factor does it right. Also, if you're looking for some extra protein, you can try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. It's great. I recommend it. You owe it to yourself. Make your life a little bit easier. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code IDK50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Thank you, Factor, for sponsoring this video. And let's get back to it, people. Speaking of stairs, when I was younger and smaller, I would climb stairs on all fours. I'd lean Same. over and go into Same. animal mode. Something about it just felt faster, and I think it's probably a more efficient way to climb stairs when you're little, you know? But the thing yeah. is, I only lived in a house with stairs for about a year when I was five, so I built that habit when I was young. But then we <laughs> moved to a place that didn't have stairs, which meant I never really had the opportunity to outgrow it. As far as my what? body was concerned, the best way to climb stairs was still like a dog. It just came naturally. So years later, when I was a teenager, I remember going over to a friend's house oh, for the no. first time, oh, and no. when we went up the stairs to his room, my muscle memory kicked in and I clambered up the stairs with all the coordination of a greased up baby deer. Oh my Both gosh. him and his mom were like, what, uh, what you doing there? <laughs> Billy, I think we gotta send this child home. He's clearly not well. <laughs> I wonder if the mom was like, oh no, he brought home a weird one. <laughs> Five minutes into hanging out at the homie's house and you're running up the stairs like a dog. Yeah, what is the final age where doing that is appropriate? I guess like eight or nine, maybe? Cause I definitely did that as a kid as well, but like, I don't know, dude. <laughs> and sure, that's kind of embarrassing, but old habits die hard. So as much as I knew it looked weird for me to rumble up the stairs like that, I probably only had one or two opportunities a week to break that habit and practice walking like a normal person. So every time I went over to his house, I would go back on autopilot oh, no. and continue to climb the stairs like oh, a total weirdo. No. I'm not the only one that climbs stairs like that, right guys? Guys? Okay, I'll just be over here if you need me. One time I pooped in the bushes. You what? Don't Yay. worry, this one also happened when I was five. I'm not going around pooping all willy-nilly as an adult. Go over to a friend's house. Excuse me, could you point me toward your shrubbery? What? Well, this isn't any less weird than the other things he's done at our house. All right, pooping in the bush when you're five, that it makes logical sense. I think every, when you're five, really anything goes. You can do a lot of stupid stuff. I don't know if I've pooped anywhere super bizarre though, but I, of all the places that are not a toilet to, to, to do that, a bush is one of the more acceptable ones, I will say. So I was at a playground and there was a huge bush that had this little tunnel oh, through the middle, just big enough for a little kid to walk through. And on either side of the tunnel, the bush had what I can only describe describe as two tiny rooms in it. For some reason, the boys on the playground were taking turns going into the bush and peeing in one of the little rooms. Oh no. Pee, you guys think that's cool? Check this out, guys. Is that really where Tim Tom's mind was? He was trying to one up them? That would be the only thing where it's like, okay, even as a five year old, you're out of your mind. At this point, you can probably guess the rest of the story. I needed to go number two. And I figured that uh. if one of the rooms was for peeing, then the other, must be for pooping. Uh, no. I will remind you that I was only five. A five-year-old without TP. This is where my memory of the situation oh, no. goes about as fuzzy as an analog TV in a blizzard. I don't know if I admitted to my mom what happened oh. or if I just pulled my pants up and dealt with it later. Either way, the whole ordeal was very uncomfortable. But at least that time, I was the only victim of my stupidity. If you don't count my mom having to put up with a smelly boy. Uh. Another time, and again, I was only five and couldn't possibly have known better. I saw someone do that classic magic trick in a movie where they rip oh a tablecloth boy. out from under a bunch oh. of plates and silverware and everything stays in roughly the same place. That's because of a little thing called... Inert. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, the classic moment. A kid sees something on TV, they're like, well, it can't be that hard. Do the explosion. Just so you know, hey, if you see someone do something cool or impressive on TV, there's a reason why they're on TV doing it. Because they're good at it. That's why they're on TV doing it. It's incredible that certain kids have to be taught this, but yes, don't try to replicate the things you see on the TV, okay? Just don't try to do the things on the TV. That's why they're on the TV, not in the you life. My commentary is really smart today, guys. Inerta. But Inerta. I didn't know physics when I was a kid, so when I tried, I failed to properly account for several variables. Here's how it went down. 
One of my friends came over to play, and I was excited to show off a new trick I saw on the TV. But I didn't have the a tea. tablecloth or anything to put on it, so I looked around the house until I found something close enough. The bath mat in the bathroom was kind of like a tablecloth, so I had her stand on it and yanked it as hard as oh I could. Oh my gosh. Instead of effortlessly slipping out from under her like I expected, Did she break her teeth? flew out from under her with the bath mat, and she slammed her head on the edge of the bathtub. And she didn't make it very long before bursting into tears. My mom rushed in and okay. asked what happened and I didn't want to get in trouble, so I said that she fell, which is technically <laughs> true. Please don't judge me, I feel awful enough. But one of my favorite stories to tell from when I was a kid happened a few years later. One hot summer weekend, my mom installed a brand new ceiling fan in our living room. That doesn't seem important, but stick with me. Not long after, oh, no. one of my friends and my sister and I were hanging out in the living room trying to cool off. My mom poked her head in to tell us she was gonna run to the post office real quick and would be back in about 10 minutes. A little while after she left, my sister went to the kitchen and grabbed a few cans of soda and a ballpoint pen. She explained to us that the rivet that holds a can's pull tab on is in the exact center of the can, and you can use a pen to punch a hole in it. So, she put a hole in the top of the can, covered it with her finger, gave it a little shake, and then drank some soda by shooting it into her mouth. Okay. It was kind of cool. I hope it wasn't on some light carpet. I really hope this was not the color of the carpet. If a child did that in this room here, I would freak out. Please? Please tell me they didn't do that on the carpet. But maybe, hey, maybe that's about to become relevant. Maybe Tim's about to throw it into the ceiling fan and paint the entire carpet brown. It was kind of cool, and my friend very enthusiastically tried oh, it out no. for himself. But he shook his can way harder oh, than necessary, no. and I guess he didn't have great aim because when he went to drink, all he got was a nose full of carbonation. When he pulled his head out of the line of fire, the jet stream just kept going. It absolutely covered the ceiling and my mom's brand new ceiling uh, fan. My sister and I just looked up, froze in, in horror, having no idea what to do. Before we could even finish processing what just happened, my mom walked in with a big smile on her face Let's that go. lasted for about two seconds before shouting, I was gone for 10 minutes! 10 minutes! <laughs> that story is that my friend started crying because my mom yelled at him, and we never spoke again. I mean, unfortunately, yeah, your friend has to learn to not do something else stupid! That's like the dumbest thing. That's so dumb. That annoys me so much. Man, I really hope when the time comes that I have kids. I'm gonna teach them to be not so stupid, but if they have friends over that are stupid, then what am I supposed to do there? Okay, here's the goal. Here's the goal. Make enough money that I can replace carpets and not cry about it. But still, it's the principle, people. It's the principle. The snare, the snare, the snare, the snare, the snare, the snare. I don't know, dude. All I know is Slapperino, people. That was a slapper. Now, I'm very excited for this one because we've looked at a very similar topic in some of our Let Me Explain Studios videos. My least favorite teacher. What could it be? Clearly, Tim has a very bizarre uh, relationship with school. So I don't know what I'm, sh I have no idea what this teacher's doing that's so bad, but we about to find out. All right, people, let's give this one an old rip. I say we let it rip. Okay, fine. Um, Un, two, three, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix. Uh, go. I've been incredibly lucky that pretty much every teacher I've ever had was great. There were a handful that I didn't get along with, but it was never anything too <laughs> bad. Except in one instance. One of my elementary school teachers completely ruined school for me. Teachers are such a big part of kids' lives, and I don't think she handled my education with nearly enough care. Now this was a long time ago, and I'm hopeful that by now she doesn't have this effect on students anymore. But I wasn't articulate enough in the sixth grade to properly express just how awful she made me feel, so I'm gonna do past me a solid and have a little rant about my least favorite teacher. Let's Strap go. in, folks! Woo! My school had this program called GATE, which stands for Gifted and Talented Education. Education. Every now and then, a gate teacher would make their way around every classroom and scoop up the gate kids to go, I don't know, play with tangrams for an hour. Okay, yeah, that's the thing that I could have done if I didn't go to the gifted school. So I talked about this in a, in a video, I forget which video it was. It was a couple months ago now, I think, that I talked about how I was a, a gifted child. And I was, you know, like top three in my, you know, like the top like three students from each school all can go to like the gifted kid school where they'll all be together. And I decided to do that, but if I 
didn't want to go to the gifted school, I could have stayed at my school and done basically this program where they take you out of your class and you do gifted kid stuff sometimes. Honestly, I wish I didn't do any of the gifted stuff, honestly. I wish I just grew up as a normal kid, but I'm weird now, so here we are. Eventually, the school decided that regularly interrupting classes wasn't a great idea, so they created the 4-5 combo class. About a dozen kids each from the 4th and 5th grades would go share a classroom and have an accelerated curriculum year-round. The next year, that group of kids stayed with the same teacher and became the 5-6 combo huh. class. And the next next year, when the 6th graders went off to junior high, Wait, the younger kids took their place at the top of the class and a new wave of 5th graders joined. I entered the gate program with that initial group of 4th graders, which means that I was in the combo class for three years. Usually, if you have a teacher that you don't get along with, you only have to deal with them for one year. Ah. But I had the worst teacher I've ever had for three years. If that doesn't deserve a rant, I don't know what does. Yep, Let's call no, her deserves. Mrs. K for Karen. You know the type. Listen, I'm a key. Hey, hey, he said it, not me. Much love to anyone named Karen watching these videos. You don't, you don't deserve these stereotypes. I do not agree with using a person's first name as like a slur. Ah. That is such a mean thing to do. I know plenty of wonderful people named Karen. I did, that annoys me so much that that's a thing. I've talked to a handful of kids from the combo class in the years since, and it's not like I've been scientific with my data collection, but the pattern that I've noticed is that all the girls seem to have loved her and all the guys seem to have hated her. I don't know what that means, but I detect bias. The combo class had two teachers, and when we needed to split up for grade-specific things, our other teacher would take the older kids. Let's call her Mrs. A for awesome. So during the final year in the class, I would occasionally get a break from the ever-present dread that Mrs. K caused, like a glass of water in the Sahara Desert. That might be a little dramatic, but that's how I felt. And you know what? Just because you're young doesn't mean your feelings aren't real. Mrs. K was an adult in a position of extreme power. She got to decide if we could go to the bathroom or not. More True. than anything, it was her responsibility to be like, hey, I feel like we're not getting along. What can we do to build trust? But instead, she straight up bullied me until I cried on several occasions, spilled soda all over my copy of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and then denied it, even though I watched her and was just generally mean for three years. Uh, three years. Okay, the, the pouring the soda on the Harry Potter, that's just not okay. But I mean, to be fair, here's the thing, is when you become an adult, you realize you're just a kid that got older. You know, it's like kids put like teachers, and well, adults in general, but they'll put teachers on this giant pedestal of like, you are the basis of human decency. You are the decider of our fates. It is all up to you. Meanwhile, that teacher could have gone through anything the night before. They could have gotten a fight with their boyfriend. They could have lost 10 times in a row in Mario Kart Double Dash and screamed and cried and threw their controller at the TV. It's like, they don't necessarily have the, the willpower in their heart the next day to be like, okay, let's work on building up this relationship with Tim Tom. Tim, what can we we do to strengthen our bond and create better communication between the two of us. Was well, she gonna do that for 25 students, bro? Like, I don't know. You're asking for a pretty exceptional adult. These are just human beings. With that being said, I'm sure she was mean and you shouldn't be a teacher if you are mean. So that being said, you know. For example, one time near the end of the school year, Mrs. A planned a little after-school celebration. She took everyone's order for McDonald's during the day, and then that evening, we all came back to the school, ate dinner, and had a little party. Told you she was awesome. All of the kids trickled in and were sitting in a circle talking. Everyone was pretty loud, but this was uncharted territory. An empty school? Neat! So when Mrs. A tried to get everyone's attention, they just didn't hear her. But when she went to stand up and talk louder, Mrs. K stopped her. I was sitting right next to them, so I could hear Mrs. K say something to the effect of, nope, just wait, they'll figure it out. She was what? deliberately telling Mrs. A to be passive aggressive. Who does what? that? Even as a kid, that seemed obviously dumb. So I did what I still think is one of the most mature things I've ever done. It was time for Project... <gasps> Get their attention. Duck. Okay. I shouted, hey, everybody, and about half of the kids looked at me. Now, as a kid who grew up pretty poor, I was always told to pay attention to how much things cost when I ordered food at restaurants. I was keenly aware of the fact that Mrs. A had just spent at least 40 thousand dollars to buy nuggets and burgers for the entire class. I said something like, it's cool that Mrs. A took everyone's favorite orders and brought us all McDonald's. Now many teachers would do that, so Yay. I think she deserves a round of applause. Yay. And when half of the kids started clapping, the rest joined in and started paying attention too. I love it when a plan comes together. Then I said something like, now we need to be quiet so Mrs. A can pass all our food out because I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. Yay. I don't think Mrs. K appreciated being shown up by a literal child, but maybe that wouldn't have happened if she wasn't 
isn't deliberately being passive aggressive. Yeah, Mrs. K. Howdy, Mrs. K. <laughs> All right, that's a very interesting moment in time. I don't know if that's really a moment that shows how evil <laughs> Mrs. K was, to be completely honest. It honestly seems like you like grew in that moment. Honestly, that was some character development right there. But I mean, to be fair, yes, if you're a teacher, yeah, communicate what you want to happen. Definitely the approach of, yeah, let me just say nothing until they do the specific thing I want and then it'll, everything will fall into place. Yeah, that's not how, to, that's not how you do it. One time I wrote a story about how a kid was having a bad day and their teacher made it worse by being petty and mean. I wonder where I got the idea. This wasn't for an assignment or anything, I just wrote it for fun. But when I was done, I was so excited that I had finished a full story that I showed it to Mrs. A. But Mrs. K ended up reading it too, and it was pretty obviously about her, which she didn't like. Ooh. Instead of doing the responsible thing and using this opportunity to see things from my perspective. Bro, bro. <laughs> He is expecting these teachers who deal with children all day to just be these stoic monks. Tim, I saw this unprompted story that you wrote about how horrible of a human being I am that I didn't ask for you to write, but you wrote anyway and I was forced to see it. I just wanted to know, what can I do for you? Tim, that ain't happening. That ain't happening, boss. Like, this is a jaded, grizzled adult, bro. Like, they don't want to do that. Again, again. Don't be a teacher for little kids if you can't be patient with kids. I'm just saying. Instead of doing the responsible thing and using this opportunity to see things from my perspective, and perhaps taking a moment to think about what she could do on her side to build some trust and form a healthier and more productive relationship with one of her students, she got real mad and called a parent-teacher conference. Oh, man. So my mom and I sat down with her one day after school, and she went through all of the things that really concerned oh, her. No. But it was clear that she was just personally offended for being called out. Luckily, my mom was like, yeah, I don't see any problem here. Get there was Tim, something mom. that happened that my friends and I didn't handle well, but instead of talking to everyone involved and maybe teaching us how we could have handled it better, like a teacher is supposed to, Mrs. K chose to humiliate my friend group in front of the entire class. There were about six of us who had become pretty close friends. Basically, we'd always hang out at recess and ask each other really deep philosophical questions like, wouldn't it be weird if milk was green? But of then course. we'd realize that it wouldn't, because if milk was green, then that would be normal and white milk would be weird. Wouldn't it be weird if shadows were green, Tim? Could you imagine if shadows were green, bro? Tim clearly is no stranger to making things green that you wouldn't expect to be green. So milk, you know, is only one, you know, an arm's length away, you know what I'm saying? Because if milk was green, then that would be normal, and white milk would be weird. Whoa. One time I used the phrase personal space bubble and someone thought the word bubble was particularly funny for some reason. I can't remember exactly how it happened, but it became an inside joke. And before long, we ended up just calling our group the bubble. But it turns out that names are a powerful thing. And after a few months, the entire class knew that we had one ah. and they wanted it. We never set out to be exclusionary. It was just an inside joke that other kids overheard. So when someone who none of us knew very well came up at lunch and asked if he could join the bubble, it was like, that's not really how this works. Aww. He just wanted to make friends, but it was a question that we hadn't even considered, and for lack of a more thoughtful response, we kind of just awkwardly told him no. That rejection really upset him, especially after he must have worked up the courage to come ask us in the first place. So he went crying no! to Mrs. K. No! Stop! Oh, no! And this horrifying smile! Oh, no! Wow, I never thought of it that way. Guys, if you and your group, if you and your homies want to seem cool, give your group a name but be chill about it don't like shove it in people's faces just be you got to be chill about it so that it spreads through word of mouth don't go saying hey we're the idk stands <laughs> no okay not that hey we're the we're the goofballs we're the squad we're the circle don't don't sh scream it from the mountaintops this has to spread organically anyways let's see what uh horrifying things this uh, grinch of a woman is gonna do instead of taking us aside and talking to us about what happened in private she called us out in front of the entire class. She said something oh, to the effect no. of, I've been hearing all about the bubble for months, and now I understand that you're going around and telling kids that they can't be in it. Oh, then I'll never gosh. forget that she pointed at me and said, I'm popping the bubble. What does that even mean? She didn't talk- Oh, wow. Ooh. Ooh, wow, Mrs. K. Howdy, Mrs. K. <laughs> she thought about that one all night. She was in bed like, oh, I know what I'm going to say to these kids to really ruin their day. Pop the bubble. Ooh, wow. Pop the bubble. Pop the bubble. No, I won't let you. <laughs> I 
bet there are kids who heard that who were like, whoa, that's so cool. But then like any adult is like, Mrs. K, you are a loser. <laughs> what does that even mean? She didn't talk through things with us and set reasonable expectations. She was just like, yep, I popped the bubble. Problem solved. If she had taken the time to understand what was really going on, then she could have helped us work through a better way to handle it and set a good example for the people. But no, she singled us out in front of everyone and set a terrible example. Now how am I supposed to be a good person? <sighs> Yeah, Sorry hard. for getting so mad. It's hard. It's hard to be a good person when Miss K comes through, pops the bubble. Miss K, my advice for you, go outside. You know, after work, after school, go outside, look at a tree. Realize, hey, everything you think is a big deal probably ain't that bad. Probably ain't that bad. Maybe watch a couple Robert IDK videos, you know? Lighten up. Learn to chill. <laughs> learn to laugh. You know what I'm saying? Popping the bubble. You can't pop the bubble. The bubble, ne the bubble never pops, bro. You can't pop the bubble. But you know what? you can pop, you can pop over to Tim Tom's channel and make sure you are subscribed to him because him, he did all the hard work on this video. I was just the guy being silly. But yeah, make sure you check him out. Here's the last time we looked at Tim Tom. If you missed that video, make sure you check it out because it was so much fun. Here's a video that YouTube thinks you will like. I will see you here or I will see you there. Thank you for watching my stuff, people. I will see you very soon. Peace.